So today I have come out to photograph some demoiselle. They're a species of damselfly and well their actual name is a banded demoiselle. Now because it's insect week I thought it, they'd be a great insect to do. They're beautiful. Everyone can see them. All you have to do is head to a canal. They're on most canals. They like the slow flowing water of a canal and they like the muddy bottom of a canal. So generally, where there's a canal, you can find banded demoiselle. Hence, I have come to my local canal and am getting some photos. So, you can see from my photos what the banded demoiselle looks like, but just in case you want to be told, they are a metallic colour, the males being blue and the females being more green with a golden tip on their abdomen. And they fly in a very distinctive way. So unlike dragonflies, which hover, they have a lot of control dragonflies as they fly. Well, damselflies do a very up and down flight. It's really looks uncontrolled. Um, so you'll see them bouncing up and down in the air above the water. Also, Another way to identify them is the fact that when they are perched on a bush or a leaf, they will always have their wings closed. Now they may open and shut them a few times, but their wings are generally closed. This is different to a dragonfly who have their wings open when they're sitting. And probably the most distinctive feature of the banded demoiselle is the big blue patch on its wing. And the name demoiselle comes from the fingerprint look of that patch on the wing. So look out for metallic colours, blue and green. Their wings to be folded flat, not out, so you can only see. It's as if they've got one wing because they're together. And finally, look for the dark blue patch on the males. Females don't have this, they have a white patch on the very tip of their wing, but they are also green with a golden tip to their abdomen. So the females are harder to distinguish from the males. So we're heading to a patch where there's lots of perches in the canal, lily pads and the like, because this is where the banded demoiselle perch and the males will fight for perches. And the reason for this is that to attract the females, they will often do a dance. And for this dance, they need a place to go back to. So they will fight for a perch and then do dances, just fluttering around and then going back to the perch. So to see this, you need an area with lots of perches and I know somewhere perfect where there's lots of lily pads. And this behind me is perfect breeding perches for the banded damoiselle. So they will sit on these lily pads, for example, and display their territory. Then when a female comes along, they will all chase her and it will go down quite badly, normally ending up with them all drowning in the water. Luckily, they have the ability to breathe underwater. What they will do is they'll close their wings, creating an air pocket between them. This means that they can go underwater and survive. The female will also do this to lay her eggs. She lays them on the plants, so the stems of these lily pads. That means that she can trap the air and go under the water to make sure the eggs are safe. So as I mentioned, this week is insect week. I think it's a really good idea to have an insect week because insects are something that is so important to the natural world and yet are underrated. So I will have the link to the website which are hosting it down below if you want to go check them out. It's not advertising, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I will put it there in case you want to check it out. I'll certainly be participating in some of the activities and yeah, make sure not to ignore the insects.
So not only today were we learning about the band Damoiselle, we were also taking photos. And it's very important to know how to take a photo. Because they're an insect, they're very small. This means that they're very fast and they're very difficult to find. So to find them, simply find something similar next to them. So it would often be a leaf or a flower, and you find that normally with a wider zoom, and then you zoom in once you've found them. Once they're in your viewfinder, if you want the really good photos, you need to make sure you have a high shutter speed. Now the insects are very quick, they move very fast, and they're very small, meaning a tiny bit of shake in the camera could blur the whole thing. So you need a high shutter speed, which is why a beautifully sunny day like today is great. As much as it may be hot, it's a great day to be able to knock up the shutter speed and not suffer with the ISO. You want the ISO to be as small as possible, but I always think that if you do have a higher ISO, it's not the end of the world. You can always help that in post, but you can't help a blurry photo. Finally, you want the lowest aperture. Because they're very small, you want them to be the only thing in focus in the shot. There are exceptions to this. When they were spreading their wings, I'd put my aperture up to about f8 to f11 to make sure that when their wings were open, I'd get as much of their wing detail as possible so that they weren't just blurred out. And obviously, if you want to get the background, you'd obviously raise it up but this will make the ISO higher and damage the image quality. So you want it as low as possible. When it comes to focusing, I used manual focus. The autofocus is not precise enough to pick up the very small movements that they make. Also, they're often on rocking branches. If the branch is rocking and you're focused on the branch, then it may go in and out of focus because you've got a very low aperture. So, I'll often move the camera forward and backwards as opposed to focusing. I'll normally have it focused as close to me as possible and then move the camera in and out. Now, today I was using my Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. This is not a macro lens, but I don't own a macro lens, so I make do with what I've got. Now, my images are very sharp, so I can crop in on them to make them appear like they were macro. Um, and that works great. I don't think if you don't have a macro lens, you should not do insect photography. If you don't have a macro lens, just use a different lens. It's not the end of the world. And then if you do want to turn that lens into a macro lens, you can get extension tubes, which are not that expensive. Damselflies are not very small. So using a macro lens is not necessary. When it comes to the videos, I would basically set up my tripod on a perch, which I'd seen them go on before, and then wait, because they would eventually come back to the perch. If you see one on a perch, and then you see it again on that perch, it's probably a good perch, because there are loads of perches, and so they should come back to the good ones, instead of going on all of them. So, always set up your tripod and wait. Waiting is a good idea. From my experience, they seem to be quite afraid. You'll often be walking by and there'll be them perched and you'll get your camera out, ready, you're about to take the photo. They fly off. I do think they're very aware of our movements, so if you can sit still somewhere, you're more likely to get them to come closer. So we're now heading home from our day of photographing the banded damoiselle and it was a very good day. So I will play some images and thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe for the next video.